Hello, my name's Stephen, and this is Faith Ministries. Today, we're looking at another old Bible called the Coverdale Bible. Now, early in the piece, a few months ago, we did uh, an examination of the Tyndale New Testament. But today, we're looking at the Coverdale Bible. Prior to Tyndale's arrest in 1535, and subsequent being tortured and killed in 1536, Tyndale had made great progress in translating the Bible. He was helped by a group of people who shared the vision of bringing God's word to the common people, because in England at the time, basically the Bible was only available in, in the Latin form from the Catholic Church. By the time of Tyndale's death, through strangulation and burning at the stake, he had translated the entire New Testament, the whole of the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible, and also the book of Jonah, into English. People around him were eager to have the whole Bible completed in English, but Tyndale was not able to complete that vision that he'd had. Following Tyndale's arrest, his work was continued but to completion by a man called Miles Coverdale. Coverdale's Bible, therefore, has the distinction of being the first complete translation of the whole Bible into English. It contains both the Old and the New Testament, plus the Pentateuch. The English-speaking world now had what they'd always wanted, an entire Bible in English they could read for themselves. The question is, though, we need to look at first is who was this Miles Coverdale that suddenly appeared on the scene? Well, like Tyndale, Coverdale was born in the late 1400s. In fact, it was around, four, it was in 1488 that he was born. And like Wycliffe, he came from Yorkshire in England, and he too was educated in Cambridge. He had a Bachelor of Canon Law in 1537, 1513, sorry, and became a priest at Norwich in 1514. Coverdale assisted the defence of a certain Robert Barnes, who was also tried for heresy by the church in 1526. And like Tyndale, he too ended up being burnt at the stake. During this time, across England, Great Britain, the Spanish Inquisition was in full force, and his suspected heretics were often tortured and killed by burning. Fearing for his own life because of what he was doing and because of his stance and his reputation, Coverdale fled England. He went to Europe and he settled in Antwerp. In Antwerp, he met other reformers, men such as Martin Luther and, and, and other people like that who were working on their own Bible, getting it into their own language. Coverdale knew of Tyndale's work and he desired to continue it. He wasn't a linguist, he knew basic Greek, he knew basic Hebrew like most of the priests and scholars of that time would have, but therefore he made use of Tyndale's existing work. He took Tyndale's 1534 New Testament and the Patentishuk and, and also the book of Jonah. He then translated the remaining books of the Old Testament with the Apocrypha by using a combination of Latin Vulgate and German translations such as Martin Luther's Bible, and also the Swiss-German Zurich Bible. By 1535, Coverdale had completed the entire Bible in English, and it was published in Europe. And as Tyndale was being imprisoned, he was being tortured and later killed, um, in England, they were possessing the first complete Bible in English. Now, as most of the historians would know, at this time, around the mid-1500s, the King of England at the time was the, the guy with the great reputation of many wives, King Henry VIII. He was very controversial, but very strong in what he believed and what he wanted done. And so he eventually broke free from the hold of the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church over England at that time and said, no, we're going to have a Church of England and he put himself as the king, as head over that church. And being king, he meant that he could set his own rules, as we know that king can. As a direct challenge to the pope, he removed out of these English churches the Latin Bibles and replaced them as like 9,000 parishes across England. And he replaced it with Coverdale's Bible. 
an English Bible and not the Latin one. Coverdale's complete English Bible in these churches are later followed by Matthew's Bible and then the Great Bible. Later, folio and quarto editions of the Coverdale Bible were published in 1539, and they were the first complete Bibles, not just in English, but actually published in England itself. 1539, the folio edition carried the royal license. It was approved of by the king himself, and therefore the first officially approved Bible translation in England. Despite the emergence of the Matthews Bible and the Great Bible, the Coverdale Bible continued to be reprinted over 20 editions, either of the whole Bible or the New Testament, right up until 1553. Coverdale also went on to have official involvement in the preparation of the Great Bible that came out in 1539. The tide had turned. English-speaking people now had access to a Bible in their own language. We take it for granted these days, but these people had hungered, they died for it, should never take for granted the Bibles we hold in our hands these days. Lives like Tyndale and other men were sacrificed for those Bibles that we might read them in English and other languages around the world. It was the faith and the tenacity of Christians, people like Coverdale, who held to the vision of an English Bible so the ordinary people could also read it and understand it. So what does it look like and how does it read? Let's check it out. Here on this particular website called the publicdomainreview.org is an actual digital copy of the Coverdale Bible. And that is a part of the illustrations on the front of it. And as we click on it, we go through it, we can see how it is actually written out and printed in the Old English. If we turn to a closer view here on a wiki source, we see that the artistic work on the front of the Bible itself, um, how it was actually printed. And it comes down here and you can see some of the Old English I won't try to read it. It's a bit tricky, but you can actually read it here. For example, we have the books of the Holy Bible and how they were named in English and Latin. And so we have the, the books of the first part and we have Genesis, first book of Moses, etc., and Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And you can see how they actually wrote them uh, in the old English form where they had L's instead of S's and that sort of thing. And then we go all the way down through the rest of the books of the Bible and New Testament, etc. If we have a look at this particular website called the Texas Receptus Bibles.com, we see the Coverdale Bible 1535, and we have a look at Luke chapter 2. And it says here, verse 1, it fortuned at the same time that there went out a commandment of Augustus the Emperor that the whole world should be taxed. And this taxing was the first that was executed when Cyrenus was lieutenant or lieutenant in Syria. And you can see the, how it read. In a way, it read very much like the King James, but it was very written in the old English at that time. And Joseph got him up also from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah or Jewry to the site of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Uh, it's, it's interesting to watch how English is actually uh, evolved, I suppose, is another word for it, over the years. But at the time, the people could read this form of English quite easily because that's what they were used to. So that is Miles Coverdale's complete English Bible. First one printed in England, a uh, complete English Bible put into over 9,000 parishes and churches across England by King, uh, King Henry VIII. It is historical, leading two other Bibles being developed over the years, such as the King James, the Geneva Bible, and others like that, and leading into the modern Bibles that we have today. Let us take time to sometimes reflect and think about the sacrifices that these men and women made to actually, so that we could have a Bible in our own language and read it today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share so more people may see it. Until next time, God bless.